What's up, you splendid sociopaths? It's Chris with Tabletops and Tentacles here with an unboxing of Crimes in History, H.H. H. Holmes's Murder Castle. This is a game I am very excited about. This is from Blueprint Gaming Concepts, and this is a game designed by Seth Cooper and Brent Hoffman, featuring illustrations by Holly Carton. And Holly is a... Let me take this plastic off. And Holly is a super talented, amusingly morbid artist who does a lot of stuff based around murders and horror things. We have a puzzle based off of her work. We also have an awesome uh, Edgar Allan Poe poster up in the living room that I'll throw up on here too. That's just absolutely amazing. All sorts of gorgeous architectural details along with little easter eggs and cutaways and things. I love it. Um, this is really interesting because it's based off of H.H. H. Holmes who is... well he was a monster but <laughs> um, an interesting character all the same. And in Crimes and History, H.H. H. Holmes' is Murder Castle, you're exploring rooms and collecting evidence while battling backstabbing overnight guests and evading Holmes in his thrilling house of horrors. The castle can be built differently each time using unique modular room tiles inspired from the original castle's blueprints. There's trap doors, greased chutes to the basement, brick walls, and seeping gas. Uh, this looks really cool. I am very excited about this because he kind of just appears all over the place because he's got trap doors and things. There are different event cards that you can use to sabotage other players or wreak havoc as you're going. This also includes the second story expansion content, which draws out the content to both a solo mode and a seven up to seven player mode. Uh, this is, uh, it says 15 to 20 minutes per player, and it plays two to six for the regular content. I'm really pumped about this. So this is the Murder Castle Jigsaw Puzzle. This is based off of the original art that inspired this game. And then there's the Edgar Allan Poe one, which is what we have a print of as well. Love Holly's art so much. The Rue Book. So the second story expansion is included inside the box with everything else. It's a nice sized rule book. It's got a lot of the artwork in it, which is always good to see. Looks like it's 24 pages. Oh, I'm so excited about this. Love this art so much. No easy plastic. I'm gonna kind of just unstack the room tiles for a minute. I've got some Ziploc bags, a standee, and some thicker tiles. Some more standees. We'll open this up as well. So I'll admit there's a lot more to this game than I expected here. I'm kind of surprised. So this is a really nice, like, microfiber texture bag. I actually really like the material on this. It's got a lot more flex to it than a lot of the others that feel like they're... They're hard to like just bundle up and throw around. I like that. A lot of punches. A lot of things to punch. Ooh, the player boards are double si uh, double thick. That's nice. They're a little bent, but I think that's just from the way they were sitting there. So they've got that nice sliding spot that are cut away for it. The backside has the art on them. We've got Hoyt Fleming, Adeline Wynne Doyle, Abraham Fitzsimmons, Lola Radcliffe, Jonah Nisbet and Jeremiah Pinkerton. So they are a little warped, but I think that will be an easy fix by just packaging them the other way when I put them away. Oh, weird. <laughs> I have no idea what I'm playing around with here. This is interesting. So this looks like it's a spinner of some sort having to do with the World's Fair, possibly, because it looks like that's interesting. Okay. Got some standee bases. There's the other part of the spinner. There are the tiniest cards I've ever seen in my entire life. <laughs> They're a little thicker than cards, but thinner than tiles. Those are really interesting. Hmm. Okay. Fun. Destroy a piece of evidence. 
So those might be the sabotage cards. We've got a whole pile of black cubes. And then we've got blue, yellow, orange, white, green, and more of the same black cubes, I think, possibly. Another really nice, oh, that's great. Oh, I love that. It's same material as the other one. I like how totally different they are. Those look really nice. Awesome. Whole pile of cards. And we'll go back through these and do like a art rundown of this in the next day or two where I like, after I've played it, I can kind of have an idea how the graphic design and the art layout and everything plays out and take a closer look at all of these cards because I don't want to go through every single one of these, but it looks like we've got a few different backs on it. The Murder Castle itself is the main ones, and those look like they are the sort of the event cards. These are... I have no idea. <laughs> and Holmes stuff. So that's cool. There's the... Oh, there's the player guide cards as well. Nice. Big pile of cards. And then this is a second stack of them with what looks like a blank one there. So that's interesting. Oops. Okay. Interesting. Oh, so this is must be the second story expansion stuff here. So that's cool. Nice, decent quality cards too. They're they're not linen finish, but they've got a like a nice matte texture to them. They're not too glary. Minis and a little gold key that's actual metal. That's neat. How cool. The minis look great. They're big. They're quite large. But when they're so... I'm a little bummed just because I love this era of minis and they'd work really well for my RPG if they weren't so big. But I like having them this big from a gameplay standpoint. That guy looks sweet. Look at the palm of my hand. Oh, nice. These are really great looking. There's Holmes himself. A little bit of flashing to clean off on them, but I do like that these guys would be pretty easy to paint too. As an amateur painter that doesn't know what he's doing, that's always a plus. All right, let's take a look at. So first of all, this looks like it's a pretty nice insert. Plastic's pretty sturdy, nothing's cracked, everything's in good shape, and it looks like there's space for everything, which is really nice. So we've got some columns. I don't wanna lose that. This is actually Holmes's control panel, which is another double layer board. It's really cool. Got some tokens, they pop out really nice. It's a quality build, that's for sure. Got a laboratory shelf, a couple of little detail things like maybe a passageway or something. Got some toilets, always important. And then there's actual standees of the figures as well, if you're not into the whole miniature thing, which is kind of cool. Or maybe they're used in some way. I have no idea how the game plays. We'll find out. So there's Holmes himself. These all come out really nice. They're nice and thick. These actually say, I have no idea what it says. I assume it says Murder Castle on it. <laughs> then on the backs of these, they have the images. And the art is fantastic. I won't go through every single one of these, but I love Holly's style with these. They've got just the coolest little details and the, the angle of everything in it is just so perfect for this type of thing. It's got that sort of voyeur feel to it. I'm really excited about this. A whole pile of locations. A couple of brick wall ones as well. And that is Crimes and History, H.H. Holmes's Murder Castle. I can't wait to pull this out and learn how to play it. And we are gonna try it with the solo mode, the standard mode, and then the larger player count on this as soon as I can get enough people together to play it. As always, if you'd like to support the channel, you can go to tabletopsandtentacles.com where there are links to our Patreon and every other way that you can find us online and support us, including Kickstarters and other weird projects we do. 
Thanks for watching, everybody. May you live in interesting times.